El doctor Puente Dura es profesor de la University of Nevada. Su vasta experiencia en los ámbitos clínico, académico y de la investigación lo ha llevado a ser un referente en nuestra profesión como especialista en terapias manuales, particularmente aplicadas a la columna cervical. Sin embargo, su interés se extiende más allá de la utilización de las manipulaciones en esta región. En esta entrevista nos comenta acerca de su experiencia como educador, su visión como clínico y sus aportes en el campo de la investigación. Well, I, I find it's a lot easier to teach um, students that haven't had any experience or any exposure to manual therapy because they're like a, a clean slate. You can teach them the right way the first time. Um, I also teach weekend seminars with International Spine Pain Institute I see. and um, have you know, classes on manual therapy. And in those cases, we have um, therapists with varying degrees of experience and skill. So some of them come with you know, five, ten years of different um, experience in manual therapy. And sometimes the, it's, it's harder for them to unlearn their particular skill. They have a particular way of doing a technique, and when you try and show them a different way, um, they have a hard time changing. They kind of want to go back to their old, their old ways of doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's difficult to get them to sort of be open to change, to come up to a, a different way of doing things. Now, um, you've seen, probably you're coming from the time that we used a lot more modalities than we mm -hmm. use nowadays, and now the trend seems to be that combination of therapeutic exercises yeah. and manual therapy. Um, in your opinion, why is it that there are certain group of uh, therapies that is still hooked into that traditional approach of using modalities? I think that those, um, those therapists that still um, go with that modality approach, you know, probably see the modalities as sort of an introduction to physical therapy. Um, in other words, they're, they're working in a clinic where um, they want to see as many patients as they can for the business model. The more patients to see, the, you know, the, the more money you make and the, it, you know, it makes business sense. You want to you keep open. And so a lot of them probably use those modalities as sort of preparation for the manual therapy and exercise. And um, whether the, ther the patient actually needs those modalities or not is not really sort of taken into account. It's just, well, let's, let's put them on a hot pack or let's do some ultrasound or have some ice first as sort of a, you know, a time filler in a sense so that the patient gets a sense that they've, you know, they've been in therapy for a long time. They were in there for a whole hour. Mm -hmm. They may have only done actual hands-on therapy for 15 minutes mm -hmm. and exercises for half an hour, but the other 15 minutes were just modalities. Yeah. So I think that that's a part of it. The other thing too is that there is still some value in some of the modalities. Um, I think, you know, although the research is a bit equivocal, there's still some value in appropriately applied modalities. Maybe the unknown that it's not been researched yet, yeah. they're probably using the right uh, methodology. Yeah. There's some encouraging well. research on, on use of certain kinds of modalities, but, the, but I think it's the same with any kind of um, intervention we provide. Manual therapy and exercise seems to work for most patients that have spinal issues, but the kind of manual therapy and the kind of exercise that we do depends on the kind of patient we have. So you were strongly into clinical mm -hmm. many years ago and all of a sudden you became a DPT and then you became a PhD and now you are very involved into research. What is the re area of research uh, My, for you right now? I have two basic areas of research. The, um, the research into manipulation, uh, especially in the cervical spine. Um, my, my goal is to demystify it because I think far too many therapists in the United States feel that manipulation for the cervical spine is dangerous um, and it can be. There's no doubt that it can be, but I think with common sense clinical applications, um, and if it's done you know, in the right manner with the right patient, it's not uh, it's not risky at all. So I'm researching that and also how manipulation works. And then the second area of research I'm really interested into in, is the neuroscience education side of things, mm -hmm. explaining pain to patients and then taking matters up into the brain. I see. And I think that the two are actually melding in together because I'm, I'm I'm becoming more and more convinced that manual therapy and spinal manipulation works because it's an input into the neuroscience mechanism. It's an input into the patient's pain experience and it changes the way they perceive their pain. 